Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown and AW Rampage review. SmackDown was from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Ucasville, Connecticut. I think that's how you pronounce the name of the town. While Rampage was taped from Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. SmackDown tonight, absolutely awful show. This show is absolutely fucking abysmal. God awful. This show is just as bad as My Night Raw. That SmackDown roster, when you look at SmackDown's roster there, it is absolutely terrible. It is on life support, in my opinion. What do we get on SmackDown tonight? We had, once again, the Usos versus the New Day. Even though they're the two best tag teams in WWE, but... How many times do we got to see the Usos and New Day go at it? How many times? And the SmackDown tag team titles were on the line. It's the same fucking shit. What else did we get? We had Rick Boogs versus Sami Zayn. Charlotte Flair versus Naomi. And we had the Viking Raiders take on Moss and Corbin. The Joker and the Riddler. Overall, SmackDown tonight, absolutely fucking awful show. God awful. But before I start the review, uh, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video that I uploaded earlier today, my movie review of Spider-Man No Way Home is up. So if you guys haven't checked out my review of that, definitely uh, give it a watch. So just wanted to uh, mention that. But let's jump right into the review. SmackDown opened up tonight with the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. Reigns ended up coming back after he tested positive for COVID, so he was out. And he made his return to SmackDown tonight. So Reigns ended up coming out. He got on the mic. And he ended up calling on New England to acknowledge him. Reigns ended up saying that he misses one week and everything falls apart. He ended up saying that when you're in isolation, you do a lot of thinking. Reigns wants to say that there's so many things he wanted to say and do. So many people he wanted to say, but two people. And he doesn't ever want to ever see those two in his life again. He kept saying those two people are Brock Lesnar, the WWE champion, and Paul Heyman. So then out came Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Both of them came out. They got into the ring. Paul Heyman ended up getting on the mic. And he ended up doing the uh, introduction for Brock Lesnar. But Lesnar ended up stopping Heyman. And he stepped close to Reigns. He got in Reigns' face. Lesnar ended up mocking Paul Heyman's introduction. He, en he ended up introducing himself to Reigns as the reigning defending WWE champion of the world. Paul Heyman ended up liking uh, that from uh, Lesnar. And Heyman ended up saying to Lesnar, oh, saying, it, saying that was better for him, it was better for Lesnar. Lesnar then ended up mocking Reigns. He ended up telling Reigns to acknowledge him. Lesnar wants to say that Reigns always had a lot to say, but he doesn't. Lesnar ended up saying he got what he wanted last Saturday at day one, and that Reigns got what he wanted. So Lesnar was like, why don't we give everybody what they want. So Lesnar then ended up proposing title versus title, champ versus champ match. So he ended up telling Reigns to let's do this. So WWE right there, they're teasing a uh, title versus title. Maybe you know this is uh, teasing the unifying of both the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship. 
uh, thus ending uh, the brand split. If that happens, if WWE uh, does that. So, Reigns end up taking a few steps back. He ended up saying that it's a good idea, but it's not his idea. Reigns then ended up stepping to Lesnar and he ended up saying that this is his show. And we do what he says on his time. Reigns ended up saying that he doesn't do business with people who do business with trash like Paul Heyman. So Paul Heyman ended up asking Reigns, how can he talk to him of all the people in the world like that? Heyman ended up taking credit for Reigns having his Universal Championship and keeping it on him. So Heyman ended up going on about protecting Reigns from Brock Lesnar and loving him because he was his tribal chief. So Lesnar ended up interrupting. He ended up asking Paul Heyman, what did you just say? So Heyman ended up saying that while Brock Lesnar was gone, Reigns was all he had. And that he worshipped the ground that he walked on. So Brock Lesnar ended up telling Heyman to shut up. Reigns ended up telling Lesnar not to speak to Heyman like that. Or what? Lesnar ended up asking Reigns. Paul Heyman ended up looking a bit scared. He ended up asking Lesnar not to speak to Reigns like that. So Lesnar was like to Paul Heyman, I thought I told you to shut up. Reigns then ended up leveling Brock Lesnar with the Superman punch. Reigns got out of the ring. Brock Lesnar was looking on from the mat. And Paul Heyman was shocked. Reigns ended up yelling back at Lesnar about how the Universal Championship is his. And that was how the segment ended. But overall, this was a decent uh, opening to SmackDown here. You know, WWE, like I said, they're teasing that. Title versus title. Champ versus champ. You know, probably unifying the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship. And, you know, just ending the brand split if that happens there. So, overall, it was a decent segment. So then, we saw Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn was backstage with Megan Morant. Sami Zayn ended up saying to uh, Megan Morant that he's not happy with Nakamura, with Shinsuke Nakamura ducking him tonight and putting Rick Boogs in his way. Sami Zayn ended up going on about teaching Boogs a lesson and he spots Johnny Knoxville and he walked up to Knoxville. So Knoxville ended up telling Sami Zayn that he is here to, com- to campaign for a spot in the Royal Rumble match. So Sami Zayn ended up ripping on Knoxville for not being qualified for what the superstars do. And he ended up saying that he hasn't qualified for the Rumble. So Zayn ended up telling Knoxville to show him, the elder statesman, that he has what it takes to get in the ring if he can. He ended up saying, but until then, stay out of everyone's way. And that was pretty much that. So I'm like, why is Giant Knoxville still here? Why? All this is just doing is to promote Jackass Forever, which comes out next month. That's all that Knoxville is there for. I mean, I like Giant Knoxville, but him, you know, want to be in the Royal Rumble, have a spot in the Royal Rumble, it's a waste of a spot. Then we had Sami Zayn versus Rick Boogs. Sami Zayn ended up coming out, and then Rick Boogs made his way out with uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. So the match ended up starting. Boogs ended up taking Sami Zayn to the corner. He launched Zayn across the ring with with big throws, with two big throws. Boogs ended up pressing Sami Zayn in the air above his head, tossed him around the mat. Zayn then rolled out to the floor to take a breather. SmackDown came back, came back from the commercial and Boogs was ragdolling Sami Zayn. Zayn ended up coming back. He ended up getting a shot at Rick Boogs. 
He ended up choking Boogs on the middle rope. Zayn ended up rocking Boogs in the corner, nailed an elbow off the second rope, went for the cover. Boogs kicked out a two. Boogs then ended up catching Zayn in midair, ended up applying the bear hug. Boogs ended up powering up with a long vertical suplex, and Sami Zayn ended up kneeing him to bring Boogs down. So, at the end of the match, we had Sami Zayn end up returning to the ring. Boogs end up rolling him up out of nowhere because uh, Zayn ended up having some words with Nakamura. And Nakamura was taunting him with the Intercontinental title. And so, Zayn came back into the ring. Boogs ended up rolling him up. And there you go. Boogs ended up winning the match. Post-match, Sami Zayn was frustrated. And Boogs ended up grabbing his guitar. He was celebrating as Zayn was talking trash from the ring. Jai Knoxville then ended up coming into the ring. He ended up tossing Sami Zayn over the top rope. Knoxville stood tall in the ring as the theme from Jackass ended up playing. And then it was announced that Knoxville has qualified for the Royal Rumble match. And so Knoxville starts celebrating, and that was that. Overall, this match between Boogs and Sami Zayn was just meh, in my opinion. And the announcement here that Knoxville qualified for the Royal Rumble, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. What a waste of a spot in the Rumble. It's unbelievable. Now we saw Kayla Braxton backstage. Kayla Braxton was backstage with Woods and Kofi Kingston. So we had uh, Sir Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods end up cutting a promo. And they end up saying that they are confident that they will beat the New Day. And that they will walk out with the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And... uh match uh, was a street fight. So that was what uh, Woods and Kingston had to say. And then we had Charlotte Flair. God, this show continues to get worse with Charlotte end up coming out. And trust me, the show gets much more worse as we move on. So, SmackDown came back from the commercial. Charlotte was in the ring. She ended up wishing everyone a happy new year. And she ended up trashing people for their New Year's resolutions. And she ended up saying hers are history making. She then brought up the uh, women's Royal Rumble match. And how superstars can make history. So she ended up sending us to a video package and it revealed the entrances for the Royal, for the Women's Royal Rumble match. And I'm like, they spoiled this. They couldn't have us go into the into the Women's Royal Rumble match as a surprise for the women who are going to be in it in their spots. They just had to they just had to announce here the ent- the entries in the world in the women's Royal Rumble match because WWE is so fucking desperate. So they end up revealing Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, the Bella Twins. Great, the Bella Twins are going to be in it. Ain't that a John Laurinaitis uh, book in there to put the Bellas in the Royal Rumble? Oh, I gotta have the Bellas in the Royal Rumble. People power. That's a John Laurinaitis move right there. Putting the Bellas in there. Ah, great, we got to see the Bellas in the Women's Royal Rumble. So we had Shotzi. Shotzi's announced as an entrant in the, Royal, in the Women's Royal Rumble. Natalia. Michelle McCool. Dana Brooke. Carmella. And Queensley La Vega. And then they end up announcing... Mickey James. Yes, Mickey James. Competing in the Women's Royal Rumble. Isn't she with Impact Wrestling? 
She's a knockouts champion. So why is she in the Women's Royal Rumble? Does this mean that WWE has some sort of partnership with Impact? I sure as hell hope not. But with this statement right here that Mickie James is going to be in the Women's Royal Rumble, it proves right here that WWE possibly might have a partnership with Impact Wrestling. And Mickie James, I don't know why she's competing in the Women's Royal Rumble when WWE released her and there was an article that came out uh, after her release that WWE ended up putting her gear inside of a garbage bag and sent it to her house. Yeah, an article came out about that. If I was Mickey James, I'd be like, no, I'm not competing in the Women's Royal Rumble. You released me, you put my gear inside of a garbage bag and sent it to my house. But Mickey James competing in the Women's Royal Rumble, she's only competing just to get a paycheck. What a joke. WWE is so desperate that they fired, that they released other superstars, and then they had to go to another uh, promotion and get Mickey James to compete in the Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> laughable. It's absolutely laughable. So then they have announced Tamina is going to be in it. Kelly Kelly. Yeah, Kelly Kelly's going to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. Aaliyah. Isn't she still signed with WWE? And Dan Bedowson, Summer Rae. Great. Great. Summer Rae's going to be in it. Summer Rae was absolutely abysmal when she was in the ring. When she was in WWE. Yet they bring her back for the Women's Royal Rumble. Awful. Naomi, Shayna Baszler, and Lita. So these are the women that are going to be competing in the Women's Royal Rumble. When you know that Lita is there, you know the announcement of Trish Stratus is going to come sooner. Trish Stratus is possibly going to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. So you can expect that uh, coming soon. So yeah, th those are your women competing in the Women's Royal Rumble. <sighs> Fucking terrible. You have Mickey James, Kelly Kelly, Summer Rae, The Bellas. I feel like we're back in the Divas era. So yeah, so those are your women. So Pat McAfee on commentary, acknowledged how Mickey James is the Impact Knockouts champion. So, he said that on commentary. Charlotte ended up saying, that is an incredible list. <laughs> incredible list. So, Charlotte ended up going on about how she has the privilege of announcing a game changer for the match. Someone special. Charlotte then ended up praising the person. And then revealed it to be her. So Charlotte will be in the Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> great. Just great. She kept saying that she will go on to pick the challenger of her choosing at WrestleMania. So then out came Naomi. Naomi ended up saying that Charlotte can pick her challenger now. And that she doesn't have to wait until WrestleMania. And can defend against her right now. Charlotte ended up saying that she knows Naomi was champion a few years ago. But that has done nothing recently to earn a match. Naomi ended up staring her down. She ended up saying to Charlotte that she knows she's done this. So she ended up slapping Charlotte in the face. Charlotte ended up going to attack. Naomi ended up sidestepping and sent Charlotte through the ropes out to the floor. And that was that. Overall, this segment was fucking awful. The uh, participants in the Women's Royal Rumble, they shouldn't have been announced. We should have actually been surprised at some of the, entr at some of the entries 
as the Women's Royal Rumble uh, takes place at the Royal Rumble. I don't know why they had to announce it tonight. The entries in the Rumble. It's awful. So then we had Charlotte Flair versus Naomi championship contenders match. Once again, WWE doing a stupid championship contenders match. Can we get rid of doing these championship contenders matches? Really? So the match ended up starting. Charlotte ended up going at it with Naomi. She took control, but Naomi ended up fighting back. Charlotte ended up sending Naomi into the commentary table. It was back and forth between the both of them. Naomi ended up kicking Charlotte away from the corner and delivered a sliding clothesline to Charlotte. She ended up going for the cover, and Charlotte kicked out too. Naomi ended up charging at Charlotte, but Charlotte ended up catching Naomi in a backbreaker. She ended up going for the cover, and Naomi ended up kicking out too. So Charlotte ended up keeping control of the match. Naomi ended up mounting some offense. She ended up looking to go to the top. Charlotte ended up kicking her to the floor. So we had Sonya Deville end up coming out. Sonya Deville ended up saying that she neglected to mention that this match cannot be won by countout. So Naomi ended up looking at Sonya Deville. She was talking trash to her. Charlotte ended up rushing into the ring and leveled Naomi from behind. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Charlotte had Naomi end up grounded in the middle of the ring. She was taunting her. We had uh, later on in the match, uh, Sonya Deville at ringside. She had got on the mic. She forgot to mention that she can that Naomi can't win this match by disqualification, and the only way to win is by pinfall or submission. So Naomi was frustrated on the apron. Charlotte ended up charging, and Naomi ended up kicking her in the face. She ended up rolling her up. Charlotte ended up stopping the way to break it up. And we had, at the end of the match, we had Charlotte end up uh, going for the natural selection on Naomi. So Charlotte ended up going for the cover. So there you go. Charlotte ended up winning the match. Post-match, Sonya Deville ended up getting on the mic. She ended up announcing Naomi as the loser and Charlotte as the winner. So there you go. That was that. Overall, just awful match between Charlotte and Naomi. And I don't know where WWE is taking this whole Sonya Deville and Naomi uh, storyline here. It's like WWE does not know does not know what to do with it. So they're just dragging it out and dragging it out. I'm like, can we put, get an end to this Sonya Deville and Naomi storyline? It's going nowhere. So let's drop it and move on. Like I said, WWE does not know where to go with this storyline. So then we saw Kayla Braxton. Kayla Braxton was backstage with the Usos. Kayla Braxton mentioned how the New Day isn't thrilled with their final shot from the Usos coming as a street fight for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. The Usos ended up mentioning how the New Day had their chance at day one, where they paid homage to one of the greatest tag teams in history, the Dudley Boys with the 3D, and they now end up calling it the 1D. The Usos end up saying that their rivalry with the New Day ends tonight. So, the Usos end up saying that they will win and they will retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles and show why everyone calls them the Ones. And that was that. But how many times have we seen the New Day and the Usos go at it? It's the same shit. And then we had Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville backstage. 
Adam Pearce ended up saying that he's been on the phone all night. And since Roman Reigns has no opponent for the Royal Rumble, he needs one. Adam Pearce ended up saying that he's going to pick that opponent. And he's been on the phone all night making calls about the match. And they want an opponent decided before the end of the night. So Adam Pearce ended up saying that he has some ideas he wants to run by Sonya Deville. So, that was that. So, Roman Reigns has no opponent for the Royal Rumble. So Adam Pearce did his best to try to fetch an opponent for Roman. Uh, and then we had shit talk, happy talk, shit talk with uh, Happy Corbin with the Joker. So he ended up making his way out. No sign of Mad Cat Moss the Riddler. But more fucking garbage. <laughs> this show just continued to get worse and worse. So Corbin ended up mentioning how he's by himself now and says, today with COVID, you have to be careful. Corbin ended up saying that Drew McIntyre did not watch his own back at day one. So he ended up showing a video package of how him and Moss end up attacking McIntyre at day one backstage. And that was all done to take out Drew McIntyre off of TV because McIntyre has to have uh, neck surgery. So that was why uh, Moss and Corbin did that to McIntyre at day one, just for uh, McIntyre to be taken off of uh, TV. So Corbin ended up saying that makes him incredibly happy, and it was worth every penny of the fine they received. He ended up saying that him and Moss thought they put McIntyre on the shelf for months and months. But it turns out McIntyre is here tonight. So Corbin ended up introducing Drew McIntyre. So McIntyre's music ended up hitting, but McIntyre, of course, didn't come out. It was Madcap Moss. So Moss was mocking Drew McIntyre. He was wearing a neck brace and he had a sword in hand. So Moss ended up making his way down to the ring. Moss took a seat. And Corbin ended up interviewing him as if he was Drew McIntyre. So Corbin and Moss ended up mocking and insulting McIntyre. Moss was doing a horrible impression of Drew McIntyre. So they end up laughing, of course. And the Viking Raiders end up interrupting. The Viking Raiders end up rushing out. Corbin and Moss retreat out to the floor as SmackDown went to commercial. And that was that. But overall, when you have happy talk on SmackDown, it is awful, horrendous, abysmal television. Absolutely fucking trash. Then we had the Viking Raiders versus Moss and Corbin. Awful match. Absolutely boring. So we had uh, Corbin and Moss. They were looking off from ringside. Eric was in control of Moss. Ivar ended up coming in. Eric ended up slamming uh, Ivar on top of Moss. Moss ended up uh, getting back up. He ended up decking Ivar in King Corbin. Corbin ended up missing the big boot. He ended up taking one from Ivar. Eric ended up coming in. Eric started unloading on Corbin. Corbin ended up getting double teamed in the corner by the Viking Raiders. Ivar ended up covering Corbin, which Corbin ended up kicking out too. Moss delivered a cheap shot from the apron onto Eric. And Corbin ended up rocking Eric with an elbow. Corbin delivered the deep six on Eric. He ended up going for the cover. And... Ivar ended up breaking up the pin. Corbin ended up beating Eric down in the corner. At the end of the match, Moss ended up dropping Eric with the punchline. And he went for the cover. So there you go. Moss and Corbin, the Joker and the Riddler, end up 
win the match. So Michael Cole on commentary ended up mentioning that the uh, update on McIntyre said that he suffered a cervical neck sprain and severe contusions, and that McIntyre will need to see a cervical specialist, and that will come on Monday. So that was according to Michael Cole on commentary. But awful match. This match was born between the Viking Raiders, Moss and Corbin. God awful. And then we had Sheamus backstage. Sheamus ended up having a few shots at Drew McIntyre for being hurt. He had mentioned how Ricochet and Cesaro injured Rich Holland at day one. And showed the uh, the picture of Rich Holland with uh, like you know little tissue paper in his nose to stop the bleeding. So we had Sheamus end up saying that he can't help but feel a bit responsible. So Sheamus ended up announcing that he's entering the Men's Royal Rumble, and he will put a smile on Rich Holland's face when he eliminates twenty nine other superstars. And goes on to headline WrestleMania. So there you go. Sheamus is entering the Men's Royal Rumble. And then we had Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce ended up entering uh, Roman's locker room. He ended up sitting down. Reigns ended up asking Adam Pierce what he wants. Pierce ended up telling Reigns that he's chosen his next opponent. So Reigns ended up saying that if it's not him... If it's not Pierce, he doesn't care because there's no one he hasn't smashed yet. Reigns ended up telling Pierce he liked to watch this match now. So he ended up telling Pierce to leave. Pierce ended up getting up, he walked out, and that was that. Main event The New Day vs. The Usos. Street fight for the SmackDown tag team titles. Same old. With the New Day and the Usos. How many times have we seen these two teams go at it? I mean, they're the the two best teams in WWE. But how many times have we seen them go at it? It's the same fucking shit. So we had the New Day end up coming out first. Sir Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. And then the Usos end up coming out. The match started off with Jimmy... And Xavier Woods. Woods ended up getting the upper hand. He started alone on Jimmy. He tagged in Kofi. And Kofi and Woods ended up double teaming on Jimmy. Woods ended up taking back in. And he kept the attack going on Jimmy. He ended up going for the cover. Jimmy ended up kicking out two. Jay ended up bringing Jimmy to ringside for him to take a breather. Kofi leapt off the top. He ended up taking uh, both the Usos down. Kofi ended up... Going back into the ring. And SmackDown went to commercial. As SmackDown came back from the commercial. We had the Usos and the New Day brawling on the stage. Kofi ended up sending Jimmy into the LED board. uh, That was on the stage. Woods ended up doing the same thing to Jay. So Woods ended up bringing Jay into the ring. Jimmy ended up uh, decking uh, Woods at ringside. Jimmy ended up dropping Kofi face first into the edge of the apron. Woods then delivered a super kick to Jimmy. Jay then ended up pulling Woods up uh, to the apron by his hair. And Woods ended up nailing the Insiguri kick. Woods then came in and delivered a Tornado DDT on Jay. Went for the cover. Jay kicked out at two. So Jimmy ended up running in. He ended up catching Xavier Woods in a Simone drop. So he ended up going for the cover. Woods ended up kicking out at two. Kofi was getting double teamed by the Usos. So Jay ended up going under the ring. He grabbed a roll of duct tape. He tossed the duct tape to Jimmy and ended up taping Xavier Woods' arm to the top rope. So we had the Usos in the New Day. They kept on fighting. They were brawling back to ringside and from the commentary table. Kofi that got sent face first to the ring post. And Woods got tossed over the barricade. The Usos then end up picking up half of the ring steps. And they end up smashing Kofi's face uh, with the steps. They end up bringing the steps over the barricade into the crowd. And they end up 
smashing the steps into Woods' face. The Usos then end up posing on top of the barricade and on the steps. And we have Woods end up leaping off the barricade with a double flying clothesline. And Woods end up clutching his knee as SmackDown uh, went to commercial. As SmackDown came back from the commercial, the New Day end up double teaming on Jay. And we have Woods end up putting his sparring helmet on. And Kofi end up grabbing the chest plate from under the ring. Woods then end up headbutting Jimmy, and Kofi end up smashing Jimmy with the uh, with the plate, with the chest plate. So the New Day was just continuing the beat down on both the Usos. So we had the New Day end up taking both the Usos down for a double pin attempt, and the Usos both end up kicking out at two. So a table was set up in the corner. Jimmy ended up stopping Xavier Woods from putting him through it. So Jay had Kofi lean against the table. He ended up charging to put him through it, and Kofi ended up crawling away. Kofi then ended up coming back, delivering a trouble in paradise at, to Jay, and he went for the cover, and Jimmy ended up breaking up the pin. Woods slowly climbed up to the top. Jay ended up cutting him off. So Woods was hung upside down. The Usos delivered a double super kick to Xavier Woods. Kofi ended up coming in and the Usos ended up double teaming him. The Usos then uh, stood the table up in the middle of the ring and they raised their fingers in the air. They were paying tribute to, of course, the Dudley boys. Kofi got up and the Usos ended up putting Kofi through the table with the 1D and the Usos ended up going for the cover and there you go. The Usos ended up win the match, retaining the SmackDown Tag Team titles. So, we went to Roman's locker room after the match. Someone was knocking at Roman's door. Reigns ended up telling them to come in. And lo and behold, who comes in? Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins was smiling. Reigns ended up standing up to face Rollins. And then Rollins just starts laughing. <laughs> and Reigns ended up realizing what is happening. And pretty much that's how SmackDown went off the air. So there you go. Seth Rollins is Roman Reigns' opponent at the Royal Rumble. So it's going to be Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. That should be a very good matchup there. But overall, SmackDown tonight abysmal show. Just absolutely fucking awful. Now we move on to AW Rampage. Rampage was a good show tonight. We had Adam Cole versus Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas, new signee to AW. Hook was in action where he took on Aaron Solo. We had a women's tag team match between Ruby Soho and Riho versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. And the main event, Santana Ortiz and Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Garcia and 2.0 in a no disqualification match. The Rampage was a good show tonight. So Rampage opened up with Adam Cole versus Jake Atlas. This was a good match up here. Jake Atlas, like I said, he just signed with AEW. And Excalibur on commentary, he ended up mentioning that Adam Cole is the number one ranked contender in AEW. And he fully deserves it. Adam Cole fully deserves that. So the match started up with both Cole and Jake Atlas locking up. They were trading holds. Atlas ended up using a headlock to take Adam Cole down. So Adam Cole... Later on, he ended up missing the boom. He delivered uh, chops. Atlas was showing some grappler exchange to uh, Adam Cole. Atlas ended up delivering some chops to Adam Cole. He forced Cole into the corner. He was working in some elbows in the corner to uh, Adam Cole. He delivered a high knee. Adam Cole got back. He Gained advantage in the match. He ended up sending Atlas outside of the ring. 
and he ended up sending Atlas head first into the ring post. Bo Cole and Atlas went back into the ring. Cole was delivering some punches to the, to Atlas's head, and he delivered a right hand, which put Atlas down. Atlas then bowed back out of the corner. He hit a roll elbow strike to Adam Cole. He tried to do a springboard, and it backfired because Adam Cole catched Atlas with a backstabber. Cole ended up grabbing a headlock, and as Rampage came back from the commercial, both men end up coming back on their feet. Atlas ended up sending Cole to the floor as he ended up in a tope suicida on Adam Cole. Atlas ended up springboarding back in with a drop kick to Adam Cole. Adam Cole then retook control of the match. He delivered a pump kick to Atlas. So Cole ended up running on Atlas. Atlas ended up coming back. He delivered a running boot to Adam Cole. And then he delivered a power bomb. He ended up going for the cover. Cole ended up kicking out two. Atlas ended up going for the springboard, but Adam Cole delivered a super kick to him. Cole sent him, sent him up for the Panama Sunrise. And Adam Cole ended up locking in the knee bar. And Atlas ended up tapping out. So there you go. Adam Cole ended up winning the match. I think with that uh, knee bar... Uh, Atlas uh, is injured because there was a report uh, that came out after uh, that match was taped that Atlas uh, got injured. So he signs with AEW, he has his first match with Adam Cole, and he's already out with an injury. So post-match, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish end up joining Adam Cole in the ring. Cole got on the mic. He up saying that Atlas is going to get another ass whooping. But Orange Cassidy and the best friends end up coming out. Uh, we had Wheelie Yuta and uh, and Chucky e. T end up coming out. So Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly end up retreating out of the ring. And that was that. But overall, Good match from Adam Cole and Jake Atlas. And then we had Excalibur. Excalibur ends up mentioning that Cody Rhodes is not clear to compete tomorrow night on Battle of the Belts. So now it will be Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship. So... On AEW's Twitter page, it was clarified that the match will be for the Intrium TNT Championship. And I heard Cody Rhodes is not clear to compete. I think it's a uh, COVID-related issue from that's what I heard. So that's why Cody is not competing uh, tomorrow at Battle of the Belts, which I will be uh, reviewing uh, Battle of the Belts tomorrow night. So it should be a good show. So then, uh, we had Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was backstage with Andrade El Idolo to inquire about his run-in with Sting and Darby Allin. So Andrade ended up saying, this problem is not with Mr. Sting. So why is little kid working for Sting? Tony Schiavone ended up telling Andrade that Darby does not work for Sting. So Andrade ended up telling Tony Giovanni that he's looking for a new assistant. He ended up telling Sting to name his price for his little kid. So that was that. And then we had Hook versus Aaron Solo. Hook has been impressive in the ring. They, they are really building up Hook. Like I said, I think Hook is going to be next in line to challenge Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship. I think Hook is going to be the next TNT Champion uh, when Cody Rhodes drops drops the title to him. So Hook is impressive in the ring. So the match got on the way. Hook ended up powering Aaron Solo up and he took him down. Solo ended up retreating to the ropes 
Of course, QT Marshall was out there. So Hook ended up tripping to take down Aaron Solo. Solo ended up going to the ropes to break the hold. Hook persuades Solo into the corner. He started delivering some body shots. QT Marshall got involved. He ended up grabbing Hook's boot from outside the ring. As And Solo ended up trying to, to gain advantage of the match. Hook reversed an Irish whip into a running leg sweep. He ended up tying up Aaron Solo. And Hook delivered a shoulder capture suplex to Solo. Hook mounted Solo. He delivered some cross faces to Solo. And he locked in the red rum. And there you go. Hook ended up winning the match. Post-match, QT Marshall was in the ring. He got on Hook's face. Hook ended up hitting uh, QT Marshall in the head. He delivered an arm suplex. And that was that. But Hook continues to be impressive uh, in the ring. They are really doing a good job building uh, this guy up, building Hook up. And before you know it, he will be the next TNT champion. And then Ricky Starks uh, was near the commentary table. Ricky Starks ended up announcing that he has big news. He ended up saying that he will defend the FTW Championship against Matt Seidel tomorrow night at Battle of the Belts. So there you go. Ricky Starks versus Matt Seidel. FTW Championship on the line tomorrow night at Battle of the Belts. Should be an easy match for Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks is going to retain the title. That's how I see it. And then we had Ruby Soho and Riho versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. And of course, tomorrow night, uh, Riho is going to be taking on Britt Baker at Battle of the Belts. AW Women's World Championship is going to be on the line. But this was a decent match here. We had uh, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter going after Riho before the bell, end up ringing. So Ruby So end up going at it with Jamie Hayter. The bell end up ringing as Aubrey Edwards regained control. So Riho and uh, Ruby Soho end up double teaming on Jamie Hayter. And they end up getting a two count on Hayter. Hayter end up escaping. She ended up taking in Britt Baker. Soho end up getting control on Britt Baker. She ended up taking Britt Baker down, delivered a kick to Baker's chest. Riho ended up tagging in, and she ended up going for the cover. Britt Baker ended up kicking out at two. Riho ended up taking Soho back into the match. Britt Baker regained control, delivered some forearms to Ruby Soho. Rebel ended up grabbing Soho's boot, and Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter ended up taking down Ruby Soho to take control. And we had Ruby So end up hitting a suplex on Britt Baker. She ended up making the tag to Riho. Jamie Hayter was uh, in the ring. Riho delivered a head scissors takedown as Jamie Hayter was in the ropes. She ended up getting the uh, Tiger Fen kick from Riho. So we had Riho end up going for the cover, and Britt Baker end up, break it, end up breaking up the pin. So Riho ended up launching Britt Baker off. And she ended up driving Jamie Hayter down with a DET. Rio ended up going to the top rope. Britt Baker ended up pushing her off. And the match ended with Riho rolling up Jamie Hayter. And there you go. Riho and Ruby Soho ended up winning the match. So there was a little uh, push in between Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter after the match. And Rebel ended up, you know, restoring uh, that. So, but overall, decent uh, women's tag team match and should be a good match tomorrow between Britt Baker and Riho for the AEW Women's World Championship. So, that should be entertaining tomorrow night. And then we had Dan Lambert. Dan Lambert was backstage with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Lambert ended up mocking the Intrium TNT Championship match at Battle of the Belts. Scorpio Sky end up saying that he should just be given the TNT Championship because he hasn't been beaten in a long time. 
So Ethan Page ended up saying that they'll be watching closely tomorrow night. So there you go. Scorpio Sky wants to be given the TNT Championship. I'm sorry, you got to earn your opportunity. So then they went over the matches that we're going to see tomorrow night at Battle of the Belts. We're going to have the interim TNT Championship match, Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara, Britt Baker versus Riho for the AEW Women's, Ch- Women's World Championship, and the FTW Championship, Ricky Starks versus Matt Seidel. So three matches tomorrow night at Battle of the Belts. So it should be a good show. And they announced what we're going to see uh, on Wednesday on Dynamite, CM Punk versus Warlow, Powerhouse Will Hobbs versus Dante Martin, and Hikaru Shida versus Serena Deep. So, there you go. Those matches we're going to see on Dynamite on Wednesday. Main event, Santana and Ortiz versus Dana Garcia and 2.0 in a no disqualification match. But uh, before that match uh, got on the way, uh, Jake Atlas tweeted out an update on his knee. He kept saying that he'll be fine. So it looks like uh, his knee will be all right. Because there was a report I said earlier saying that, oh, Jake Atlas was injured. So it looks like his knee is uh, good. He'll be fine. So then we went to the no disqualification match, which this was awesome. This was an awesome match. So we had uh, all six men. They were brawling onto the stage. Kingston uh, started bashing Daniel Garcia against the guardrails. Kingston got a trash can. He got in the ring. Daniel Garcia was throwing some elbow strikes at Kingston. Kingston fired back with a trash can to Daniel Garcia's head. Kingston was choking Daniel Garcia with his shirt. So Kingston was just delivering some more uh, shots with the tra- with the trash can on Danny Garcia. So we had Santana Ortiz and 2.0. They were uh, battling around ringside. Kingston ended up taking Danny Garcia outside the ring, started biting him. Danny Garcia ended up getting the advantage by pushing Kingston back first into the side of the ring. Kingston ended up suplexing Danny Garcia on the floor, and Santana Ortiz. Delivered a double suplex to 2.0 on the floor. So we have Santana delivered a backward roll into a no-look cutter on Jeff Parker. Kingston ended up taking down Dana Garcia. And Santana ended up following that up with a frog splash. Matt Lee was shown throwing powder into Santana's face. So Matt Lee ended up going for the cover. Ortiz ended up breaking up the pin. So Matt Lee ended up recovering. He ended up hitting the DDT on Ortiz. Daniel Garcia had the ring bell in hand. 2.0 Matt Lee and Jeff Parker end up pulling up Eddie Kingston. Daniel Garcia ended up hitting him in the head with the ring bell. So he ended up going for the cover. And Kingston ended up kicking out. 2.0 ended up delivering a double suplex on Eddie Kingston through the timekeeper's table. So Jeff Parker... Hit a low blow on Ortiz. Santana then ended up getting the chair. He ended up taking down Danny Garcia in 2.0. Danny Garcia and Ortiz were back in the ring. They started trading strikes. So we had Jeff Parker end up coming into the ring. And Santana Ortiz end up uh, getting the pin. So Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz ended up winning the match. So, post-match, Dana Garcia and 2.0 end up attacking Eddie Kingston, Santana Ortiz. Dana Garcia end up taping Eddie Kingston's arms to the top rope. And Jericho saw enough. Jericho got up from the commentary table. He had penned down to the ring. Dana Garcia and 2.0 end up retreating. And that was how Rampage went off the air. Overall, this was a good main event. This was an enjoyable no disqualification match. Rampage was a good show. Anyways, that's it for my review of SmackDown and AW Rampage. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. 
comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my Spider-Man No Way Home uh, review if you guys haven't seen it. So, until then, I'll see you all later.